let me just mention, please, if you uh, just popped on, if you could just mute yourself, that would be great. We, you can um, use the chat function. We will be trying to kind of push through this so that we can address any questions you have at the end. So feel free to put any questions you have in the chat room so we can hit it at the end um, of the session because there is a lot of info. We try to condense it a little bit, but it evolves every time we present it. This is what we'll be presenting tonight. We're gonna go over what our fire district covers and what are the unique risks that we face within the fire district here because even though we are um, within San Mateo County and next to kind of these higher population cities, we still are a very small and unique um, area. We're gonna teach you how to stay informed about emergency notifications and anything else that pertains to preparedness. We're gonna teach you how to get ready and make a plan when it comes to each of the unique, unique threats that we face here in our area. How to engage your neighbors because it's all about neighbors helping neighbors. And then what kind of next steps and how to get more involved. Next slide. And the next slide, this is page. Oh yes, I just got it all up on mine, yay. There you go. <laughs> This one's still yours, I think, yes. Yep. So just so you guys are aware um, how our responsibilities are laid out, Woodside Fire Protection District covers 32 square miles. This is a very large area. And within those 32 square miles, we have three fire stations. We cover, it encompasses the town of Woodside, Portola Valley, and many unincorporated areas such as Ladera, Emerald Hills, uh, lots, of, lots of smaller areas. So with the three fire stations, we have 15 emergency responders on duty at a time, which serve about 25,000 people, you, you know, give or take, depending on the time of day, uh, day of the week, all of that stuff. So if you think about it, right, three fire stations for this huge area. If we were to have what's called a first alarm fire, so a call goes into dispatch and they say, okay, we have a fire, it's a first alarm. That would require five fire engines. So that's already depleted our uh, supply. We have three fire engines we could deploy but we're still gonna require mutual aid from surrounding jurisdictions. And so just like with you guys, when we talk about neighbors helping neighbors, it's very similar when it comes to our uh, government um, or our Woodside Fire. We have to depend on agencies that are right next to us to help us out. It's mutual aid. Um, so it's important that, um, that you understand that Yes, we are here to serve you and protect you, but we have a very large area. So that's why we want to empower you by teaching you the things that you can do to help us in the event of a large disaster. Also be aware too, in the event of a large disaster, if, if it's an earthquake, a lot of the resources that you might expect would come to you, say if it's Red Cross or whatnot, may not be allocated to us immediately. If, it, if it's a large earthquake, Red Cross is gonna go to the highest population density areas immediately. And we're not a high population density. So we, that is why it is extremely important, not only that we prepare, but we prepare for more extended periods of time of disruption. So it all starts with you and your family with personal responsibility and then getting your neighbors involved and the town has responsibilities in terms of having an emergency operation plan and providing uh, resources and Woodside Fire has their own job as well to provide resources and responsibilities. Next slide please. So um, this is my first slide and uh, the technology is almost cooperating, but um, I, I don't get to smile at you today because nothing can detect a camera here. Um, so let me just tell you what's on the slide without the smiles. Um, it starts with being informed. SMC Alert is our best source for information in an emergency. It's where you're going to get the alerts. 
uh, that first come out from our local fire district, and they are the most on the spot people that are going to be uh, sending alerts in our area. Um, so if there's <clears throat> need for an evacuation, if there's some other impending thing headed our way, this is the place that you're going to hear about it first. They're gonna get as fine tuned as possible. If they can say, hey, just this area, the Woodside Glens, uh, you know, skyline, whatever, we need you to evacuate in this direction and, and go to a certain place, they'll be as specific as possible. They might just be able to say, hey, all of Woodside needs to uh, sometime over the next hour get out of town. And uh, that's what we'll do at that time. Um, be prepared to get out of town. Now, if you haven't gotten yourself hooked up there at SMC Alert, please go there today or even right now because you can always catch whatever you miss while you're signing up. Uh, by looking for the video, which will be up in a couple of days on our YouTube channel. Um, and I'd rather you spend that time right now getting hooked up on SMC Alert. Uh, some of you folks that have been around for a, a while may have had some bad experiences. If you hooked up with SMC Alert a few years ago, you know, uh, you know it for being famous for sending out all sorts of alerts for um, someone saw a bobcat, someone saw some other predator. Um, someone saw a coyote in their driveway and you'd get that along with uh, other real actual uh, emergency warnings or, or warnings of interest. Nowadays you can tune those really well and uh, I, I have not been warned uh, of a coyote in oh a year and a half I think at least. So uh, SMC alert seems to be filtering really well and I'm getting every one of the uh, uh, alerts that's being sent out. Um, I, I verified that just recently. So uh, strongly recommend that. <clears throat> if you're within range of the Portola Valley uh, Emergency Broadcast AM station, that's 1680 uh, AM, uh, please check it out. See if you can reach that station. If you can, uh, they will have very timely information in case of any sort of an emergency. Uh, they broadcast on that. Uh, they have some generally useful information running most of the time. Uh, WIA and NOAA. The, WIA is the wireless emergency uh, alert system. That's like Amber Alerts. Um, that's that's uh, a, a national part of the national system of alerts, as is NOAA. NOAA is the uh, uh, National Oceanic. Uh, oh Atmospheric administration. I guess. <laughs> Anything with a current in it, NOAA's got it. Um, and NOAA operates frequencies in our area uh, that are constantly broadcasting. Um, well, actually, they're, they're constantly broadcasting um, conditions at sea, but they're also constantly broadcasting any kind of uh, alert in the area. If there's a storm warning, if there's anything going on, they'll, they'll broadcast that. And if it's an emergency alert, uh, if you have a NOAA radio, uh, it, will, uh, it will sound off on that and uh, crank up the volume and, and shout at you that, that there's an emergency alert. Every radio station that's licensed for public broadcasting is required to stop whatever they're doing and broadcast emergency alerts when they come over the national systems uh, or local systems. Uh, but there are certain radio stations that are also required uh, as primary radio stations to be especially hardened. So if we had a major earthquake and it knocked out most of the local AM FM transmitters, certain of them uh, are required to be especially hardened so that they stand a good chance of still being up after such an event. KCBS, AM, KQED, KSJO, and KZST in our area um, are primary radio stations and they will probably be operating no matter what has just happened uh, and they'll be up. Now, your television, if you bought a smart TV, over the last couple of years and certainly if you buy one now and into the future it will come with the capability of turning itself on full volume and uh, blasting out an alert um, if such an emergency alert is broadcast however there is no requirement 
that they implement that feature now, and it has not, to my knowledge, been implemented in any device. So while your smart TV can do it, it won't right now, but be prepared for that to be turned on at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and your smart TV might suddenly start yelling at you in the middle of the night. Um, pay attention because it's probably telling you something that's intended to save your life. Um, be aware that in an emergency situation, when you are most wanting to communicate with your loved ones and, and try to coordinate with your family and friends to see that everyone is safe, is when it's most likely that the cell system will be down. And even if it's working, the cell system was never uh, built to handle everybody talking at once. Uh, so it's gonna be swamped. And now in order for you to get a connection from you to somebody else in the area, you actually need two cell connections. So your, your odds of being able to reach anybody nearby on the cell system right after an emergency, right after an earthquake, right after any other big event like that, are almost zero. Texts, on the other hand, are stored in a computer someplace and sent along very quickly as soon as the other person's available. Texts go through very reliably and very quickly. So just no matter how badly you want to call, text. When, when an emergency happens, pick up your phone, pick up whatever, and text. If your internet connection is working, uh, send an email too. But a lot of the internet providers, a lot of the people uh, providing those email services could be down as well. Text will go through. Um, that's about it. So Selena, uh, on to you, unless there are any questions at this point about We'll, we'll save them, they can put them in the chat room. The last thing I wanna add, I don't know Chip if you mentioned it about the uh, AM radio is that it is a pre-recorded message so um, it's a message that's pre-recorded and it just repeats itself. So you could tune to that channel right, right now and you could just hear a pre-recorded message on there. So just be aware of that. Thanks, Chip. You we'll bet. go on to the next one. All right. So let's just keep it real, right, in our area here. Um, the facts are our major threats are obviously, right, wildland fire, especially right now with fire season going on. Yeah, I have done, a, I've participated in a lot of events and talks about wildfire season, what we're doing to prepare as a fire district, as a town jurisdiction. I think tonight, even right now going on, um, the Woodside School is doing a talk with the town of Woodside about um, wildfire season. So yeah, wildland fire, we live in an area that is high fire danger. We're very aware of it. We, you know, you guys, we chose to live in this beautiful area and unfortunately um, it also comes with some um, major risks, but there are things we can do to uh, protect ourselves. Uh, but to be aware about these risks, I mean, in 2018, the fire, uh, if you remember those fires that year were so deadly and so destructive, I believe they were the deadliest and most destructive with 1.8 yeah. million acres that were dis that were she made, the, she made the point quite well that um, that were destroyed. You know, she talked about uh, and within that, uh, wildland fires and earthquakes. There we go. Thanks. Uh, we had some major fatalities with some of those fires, with the campfire, the Woolsey fire. Uh, that 95, 97 civilians were killed. And among those were six firefighters. So they, they were extremely devastating. Last year was not great either. We had the Kincaid fire, um, Sonoma in Sonoma. What we don't realize with wildland fires is it, well, maybe we do, but there's another additional risk to that. And if you look at that picture down in the bottom left, it is the smoke that comes from those fires. And that po poses a major threat, obviously. Um, the air quality is extremely poor. Uh, people with respiratory issues. We don't even know the extent to which these fires have impacted um, our 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 soil, um, the population. Uh, so it is it is a major danger. Is is considering the smoke as well. Earthquakes are another one. I think it was was it last week or 
before there was a there was an earthquake in Portola Valley. I mean, we live on so many fault lines here um, that obviously earthquakes are a danger. That's what we prepare for. Um, and then with that, the last one that we see on there is landslides. And I don't know how many of you guys are aware of how bad landslides are and how much uh, we're impacted by landslides. But when we had the heavy rains, um, uh, over a year ago that almost took out several of our main highways with mm -hmm. Highway 84 needing emergency construction and 35, Highway 9, all these major thoroughfares that we all need for um, basically our contact with the rest of the world uh, would just get wiped out super easy. So these are the major threats that we deal with. Chip, you can move on to the next one. Hello, I'm trying. <laughs> Seriously, there we go. Hmm. So, you know, just to add to that, now we know about pandemics and uh, it, it was something we weren't prepared for. And uh, we had to do a lot of thinking real fast uh, because uh, the question is, okay, if an uh, earthquake happened today, how are we going to respond to this? Shelters, uh, the American Red Cross has had to think this through. FEMA has had to think it through. You can't pack thousands of people into uh, a gymnasium anymore and uh, think that you're doing a good thing for them, even though they don't have anywhere else to go. Um, chances are you're going to kill a lot of them. So um, the question is, how do you handle that? Well, they've thought a lot of those things through. They're setting up a lot of smaller isolation uh, areas where, where people don't have to be face to face and, and uh, working out how to, how to coordinate just a lot more smaller teams, um, those sorts of things. But we've also learned that we need to be prepared for just infectious disease events in general. And uh, we probably should have all along been thinking about this in terms of a bad flu season. Um, if there's an earthquake during a bad flu season and we're sending volunteers out to, to check on their neighbors uh, and asking you to check on your neighbors, we want to know, uh, we, we want everyone to be prepared to not get sick, basically. Uh, so we've learned things like staying isolated, wearing PPE, which is personal protective equipment, the masks and the gloves, um, when should you wear them, how, uh, how uh, heavy of protection do you need, and so forth. Is there treatment, is there testing, all of those things. Um, and you know, our entire infrastructure, our governments, our healthcare system, and so forth, is really just kind of coming up to speed on, on how to think about these things and, and be ready for the next one. Because chances are this isn't the last time we're gonna have to deal with these conditions. Um, so it's becoming part of our standard plan. Uh, and, and we hope that in the future, uh, if a pandemic were to break out the day before we had an earthquake, we'd be ready to, uh, to deal with it and not get sick. Uh, things that we've learned, for instance, are that it could be long-term, it could be short-term. This one's going to be long-term, I think. Um, I think we're going to be dealing with COVID issues for a while. I think, frankly, it's going to be at least another six to 18 months before there's any sort of, uh, treatment that, uh, keep you healthy other than don't get it. Um, staying vigilant, stay healthy is the thing. Don't let your guard down. Don't get caught up in the, the, the everybody's thinking, oh, I'm tired of being isolated. Uh, there's gotta be something else we can do. They opened the restaurants. Let's, let's all go out and, and um, actually people end up going out more often than they did before. Bad thinking, uh, stay isolated for a while. Uh, what, what's the matter? What's the matter? You can't stay at home for a couple of more weeks just so you don't die? <laughs> I have no problem with the idea of staying home for a while so that 10, 20 years from now, I, I can hang out with my grandkids and t tell them how odd the pandemic of, of 2020 was. Um, be aware that in our area, the San Mateo County Health uh, Organization is the, the the driving authority um, and the best place to get local information. They're the ones that are aggregating most ag aggressively and directly uh, into the big 
pipeline and and uh, they're also the ones getting uh, the most direct support from uh, uh, national and international sources. Um, the official place there is this smchealth.org site. Quite frankly, during this event, they've been caught a little flat-footed too, and sometimes the best information is hitting the smcgov.org site first before it gets published. In fact, they'll, they'll put something up on the smcgov.org site um, saying, and this is also available on the smchealth.org site, and it won't be there until the next day. So, you know, if you got a question, I would say right now, start at smcgov.org and then go look at smchealth.org. And uh, if, you, if, if you went out um, over the last few months looking for, for information and were frustrated by the lack of organization and the lack of completeness and so forth, um, that's gotten a lot better. Uh, if you were to go back to one of these sites today, uh, I think you'd be surprised at how much better they're organizing it. They still got a lot of work to do, but it's getting a lot better. Um, and don't let this stuff panic you because, you know, uh, quite frankly, COVID-19 is probably not what's going to kill any of us. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, I know it's not what's going to kill me. I, I had a dream about what's going to kill me, and it was really stupid. I was stepping in front of a bus. So, <laughs> The only thing I want to add to this is um, with the pandemic going on and all of the um, counties opening up, the idea... Well, the message that we want to share is that we're not opening up because everything's okay and we can go back to normal. It's just that we are now giving you the responsibility um, to be personally, um, you know, to take it into consideration for yourself to go, hey, it's still not safe out there. I'm not going to go out to this area where I'm exposed to people. We're, we're, doing, we're putting the liability on yourself, not liability, but we want you to be personally responsible. So we want it, the county as a whole wants to give you the freedoms, right? But it also wants you to still be aware we are still in a pandemic, which means that we still need to isolate as much as possible. We still need to wear the mask, our masks, and we still need to um, um, wash our hands and use hand sanitizer as much as possible. Thanks, Chip. Yeah, no, I would just add to that, just to be aware that, um, yes, when they, when they relax uh, constraints on us and say, okay, you can go back out, not only is, does that not mean that it's been beat, they know that more people are going to get sick. The objective of the management strategy is to not overwhelm the medical uh, industry, is to, to not let people get sick so fast in such great numbers that they cannot be treated. They know that people are going to get sick and they know it's going to be a while before this is dealt with. None of that has changed. So don't let your guard down, um, especially if you've got any breathing problems, diabetes, any of these other things that seem to be putting people at risk uh, statistically. Uh, you know, order, order a steak and have it delivered. Um, it'll taste just as good. Next. Yep. Oh, I, I didn't mention on that one, 211 uh, oh, is, is a pandemic hotline right now. If you've got any concerns, it's a 24 seven health uh, hotline. Uh, give them a call. Yeah, also on that note too, um, please, if you know of anybody that may not be speaking, that may work with you, for you, that do, does not speak English primarily, 201 is still a resource for them. So please make note of that and pass that information on. 